they didn't die physically right away, but they did die spiritually. They now had a separation between them and God, which we call sin. We all sin and we all need forgiveness. Another verse says, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. We all deserve to die and be separated from God forever. But Jesus came to earth as a baby and he lived in perfect obedience to God. Jesus died on the cross for me and for you. Jesus didn't do anything that deserved his death, but he went to the cross for me to pay the penalty for my sins. Three days after he died, Jesus was raised. He was alive again. He had actually died, then he was alive again. Jesus would never die again. He had conquered death. In order for me to accept that payment for my sins, I had to accept Jesus into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. That night, as I sat in my seat, I realized that it was a win-win situation. If he really did die for me, why not ask him into my heart? That March night in 1976, I became a Christian by praying and asking Jesus to come into my heart and to be my savior. What did I have to lose? I've since learned that I had a lot to lose. Because of that night, I lost the guilt of my sins because I can confess them to God and find forgiveness. I lost my eternal destination of hell and my new address is heaven. I lost my lack of direction and found purpose for college in my life. I lost my probationary status and was found on the dean's list. I lost my desire to party in risky environments and found a new set of friends in that same group that Marion was a part of. I lost my need to please my dad so much and found a desire to live for my heavenly father. I had never been sure that I could please my dad. But because God sees his son living in me, I am good enough for God. <clears throat> After that decision to become a Christian, Marion started having a Bible study with me and some other girls in my, my dorm. I began learning about the Bible and what God expected of me and how his Holy Spirit would help me grow. That may sound like I had found the yellow brick road, that everything was illuminated for me. I did, in a way, but the Bible also says that in this world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. I did have direction, and I did graduate on time with a bachelor's degree, but then I had to figure out what to do after college. I was encouraged to apply for the staff of that same group I was becoming involved with at UVM. And I did apply, and I went to um, summer training at Fort Collins, Colorado, though it was far away from my boyfriend Peter at the time. I had to know if that is where God wanted me. He wanted me to join the staff. In August, I was back home, and I had to raise my own support. I'm naturally very timid, and raising support was a big step for me, a real challenge. I was still uncertain what my future held, if that's what God wanted me to do. But I did try to find people in churches to support me. And, um, and there were a few that did, quite a few. By the end of 1979, however, Peter broke off our relationship. And I still did not have the level of support I needed to go to California to join the staff. Then in February of 1980, my brother Kurt, my dad, and I went ice fishing in Lake Champlain. On Lake Champlain, not in Lake Champlain. <laughs> <clears throat> February, it would be cold. Kurt had asked his friend Bob to join us. Bob didn't catch many fish that day. He seemed distracted. Though I didn't know it, he had baited his hook for another type of catch. He called me that night, which was Valentine's Day, to ask me out on a date. I thought my brother had set it all up. However, it turned out that Kurt didn't know anything about it. 
Um, I had been hurt by Peter, and I really didn't want to get involved with anybody else at the time. But I decided that one day it wouldn't hurt. So that next night we went out. Then we went out on a second date. Um, that second day, we went back to the bars that I went to at college. And I knew that Bob probably wasn't a Christian, and I probably shouldn't be going out with him. Remember that Bible study that Marion had begun with us at um, our dorm? One of the verses that she explained to us was, do not become unequally yoked with an unbeliever. That meant that I, as a Christian, should not become involved with a man who is not a Christian. I knew I needed to stop seeing Bob. We dated for about a month um, when that problem was taken care of by Bob. He told me it was obvious we weren't headed in the same direction. And uh, he was working on his father's dairy farm and I had plans to go to California. He broke off our relationship. About a month later, he saw me driving by him, and he knew I was still in Bristol. He called and he wanted to see me again. I was even more reluctant the second time, since I knew it would never work. But for some reason, yes came out of my mouth. I soon learned that Bob had changed. While we were dating, I had given him a booklet that explained what a Christian was and how someone could become a Christian. And Bob had read it, and on his own, he asked Jesus to come into his life. We started to go to church together instead of the bars. In the meantime, it became obvious that I wasn't getting the level of support I needed to go on staff, and they re released me from that obligation. So I started looking for a job that was closer to home. In June, I was hired at the local bank. Also in June, Bob asked me to marry him. I told him I would think about it. <clears throat> we had only been seeing each other for a short time, and just a month before, I had gone out with someone else, as I spent, and I spent time with my old boyfriend, Peter. I needed to decide if I really wanted to spend time, spend my life with Bob. A few weeks later, I told him maybe he should ask me again. He did, and I said yes. We married that November. This fall will be our 30th wedding anniversary. We have enjoyed marriage, but there were some things um, during the first part of our marriage that challenged us. We both experienced our sister's divorces and my mom and sister's emotional problems. During these trials, members of our family turned to the Lord, including my dad. There were other blessings also. On Valentine's Day, 1983, we had our first son. Then I stopped working full time, and in 1984, we had our second son, Andrew. After Andrew was born, Bob told me that he would like to have his own farm. It wasn't something I wanted, but we ended up buying a farm in New Haven, Vermont in 1985. I was not excited about having our own place because of the total daily commitment of it. Bob and I were really stressed that first year, especially. We couldn't afford to hire much help, and our boys were only one and two. Then that first summer on our own, I thought I was pregnant again. Soon after the pregnancy was confirmed, I miscarried the baby. I hadn't been careful or able to slow down. I had really taken the baby for granted. Early in 1986, we found out we were pregnant again. I became anxious and angry at Bob because he started having back problems and I had to do much of the work on my own. Of course, it was because I was afraid of losing another baby. But God was faithful and protected our little girl who arrived in October of that year. Natalie is our only daughter. After Natalie was born, our doctor advised me not to have any more children because as I turned 30, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. However, I wanted to have four children, not three. 
and Bob wanted a whole baseball team. <laughs> So in 1988, Stephen came along. While I was pregnant with Stephen, the arthritis went away, but afterward it came back. In 1990, we started looking for a different farm because both of us were physically suffering from the cramped old barn. I was ready to do something else, most anything else, but Bob wanted to continue farming. At first we looked in Vermont, then we checked out um, farms in Pennsylvania and New York. We intended to go all the way to Wisconsin, but we still haven't gotten there. <laughs> we ended up in Port Byron, New York, which is west of Syracuse. We moved all of our cows, our machinery, and all of our family in 1991. We didn't know anyone who lived there, at least not until I found Christian Women's Club and a good church in Auburn. In 1995, my dad started having pain in his back. He wasn't feeling well, he was losing weight. We were almost 300 miles away from our families who still lived in Vermont. There wasn't much I could do to help as my father found out in May of 1986 that he had pancreatic cancer. By the time that the doctors diagnosed his problem, there was nothing they could do. Dad saw no reason to delay the inevitable. He was going to die. Six weeks later, he was gone. But unlike my grandfather in 1962, I know where my dad went. He is in heaven because he asked Jesus into his life. Someday I'll see him again. He's no longer in pain, and in heaven there will be no more tearful goodbyes. In 1998, on Labor Day, a storm swept through our area, bringing with it severe wind and lightning. We lost the barn that we, were we had been renting, along with a few cows and calves. I remember standing in the middle of the pasture, in the middle of the night, the lightning still racing across the sky, trying to keep, help the vet keep the cows alive. I thought to myself, how is God going to work all this together for good, as the Bible says. Now, years later, I think of this song, through it all. It goes like this. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There have been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave blessed consolation that my trials only come to make me strong. I've been a lot of places and I've seen so many faces. But there have been times I felt so all alone. But in that lonely hour, in that precious lonely hour, Jesus let me know I was his own. So I thank God for the mountains, and I thank him for the valleys. I thank him for the storms he's brought me through. Because if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that he could solve them. I wouldn't know what faith in his word could do. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. Clearly, the destruction of the barn and the loss of our animals was a terrible mess to clean up and a disaster to us. But if that's all we found to be the result of the storm, we may have given up. But God had a plan. Just a few months later, we purchased a farm in Weedsport, New York in the town of Brutus. Um, it's only seven miles away from our other farm, and along with the barns and room for all the animals that Bob wanted, I had a house that I loved. We had looked at the same farm only a few years earlier, but it wasn't available to us then. In the meantime, the price dropped about $100,000, and they did some redecorating in the house. God knew the reason for the storm. We didn't. He knew that we would never move unless he moved us. He had something so much better waiting for us. Once again, we saw that God is in control, not us. He is good and loves us so much. He is faithful. We milked cows for 23 years on our own farm, but the last two years have been years of change for us. 
In 2008, <clears throat> our youngest son joined the Navy. We sold our cows and stopped milking. We've traveled more in the last two years than ever before, following our children around the country from Illinois to South Carolina. Because in 2009, our daughter also joined the Navy. She is in Naval Intelligence. She's based in Nevada. And Steve is in Nuclear Propulsion. <laughs> I have a hard time with that word. And left two weeks ago on a cross-country trip for his first marine, submarine base in Washington State. Our oldest son, Elijah, just um, graduated from Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia, and he's looking for a job, if anybody has one. <laughs> and our second son, Andrew, is married to Carla with three boys. He's the only one left in New York. Bob and I are also in the middle of deciding what next step God would have us take with our farm. We know that he will lead us in whatever is best. He loves us. He has proven that over and over. Ladies and gentlemen, God loves you too. He sent Jesus to die for your sins so that you could receive forgiveness, abundant and eternal life. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes on him shall have eternal life. Jesus also said he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. If you have never received God's forgiveness and have not received the gift of eternal life, would you consider making that decision today? The Bible says that God doesn't want anyone to perish. He gave us the only way to avoid going to hell. You can make that choice by praying with me now and asking Jesus to come into your heart today. Right now you can know without a doubt that Jesus died for you so that you could have a relationship with God. Would you all bow your heads? <clears throat> Dear God, I know that I have sinned. I have turned away from you. Please forgive me for those sins. I know that Jesus died so that I can be forgiven and I can know you personally. Please come into my heart, Jesus, and make me a member of your family. I want your Holy Spirit to lead me. Thank you for eternal life in heaven with you, and that nothing can snatch me out of your hand once I am yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> if you prayed that prayer with me for yourself, you are now his child. He promised that he will never leave you, and that you will go to heaven to be with him when you die. You need to read the Bible to learn more about God and his promises. It's his love letter to his children. A Stone Crop Bible study is a great way to grow, and you can ask Connie or any of the other people that lead this group about a Bible study. Now, would you please pick up your response card? It's, oh, probably the, yeah, <laughs> comment card. The hostesses will pass them out. This is your chance to make a comment about the lunch. Anything that you liked or didn't like or, or want to see again. Um, please, if you, if you prayed that prayer with me for the first time today and became a Christian, would you uh, mark that on the card? There are several things you can mark if you're interested in different things. Also, fold the card in half if you pray that prayer today, and I'll have a booklet to give you as we leave today. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Karen, so much. It was very nice for her to come all the way from Leedsport. It took her three and a half hours to get here. Wow. So that means she has three and a half hours to travel home. So I hope you think about her when she's going away, but I'm sure she's going to think of Glendora's jokes. <laughs> um, again, ladies, I want to thank you very much for coming. 
Um, and please have a good day and a safe trip home. Thank you. She hadn't laughed like that in a long time and that it felt very good. <laughs> <laughs> then it's worth it. Yes. It's worth a dollar across the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell Connie she's worth a dollar. <laughs> I'll be talking to you on the phone, hon. Okay. Bye. Oh, you I'm not taking you home? You're going Yeah, I'm you're going with Greg. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, honey. You're welcome. Do you need help getting things out? No, we're all right. Okay. I just need help with this. Uh, that's the only thing I have, right, is the crate. All right. Bye. Sorry, this wasn't your key, Craig. I don't know who it belongs yeah, to. Yeah, I've never seen it before. Because so. <laughs> it was under, yeah, it so. was under the pass, under the driver's seat. Yeah. Where you had been sitting. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, somebody's not been doing much lawn mowing. <laughs> They're in big trouble without the key. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for giving to the Bye. food pantry. Right. Thank Great. you. Thank you Thanks for much. coming. <laughs> Stay dry. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of wet. we got to get under the awning. There. Oh, that's, uh... No, thanks. Thank you, Sarah.
What you doing, Gun? I know. It was one fifty eighty. And I gave you one fifty five. I put in one eighty five. Yep. I gave you one fifty five. So it's four twenty. Yep. Is that the receipt there? Yeah. Yes. Shane, one, two, three, four, twenty. Are you goody taping? Yeah, it is. Okay. What, do you want the receipt, honey? No, I just want to see what, what, what's okay. on it. You can have one receipt and I'll have the other. What's a report card teach a parent? What a report card teach the parent? Yes. To help the kids learn. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have to lift weights to raise a dumbbell. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, here. Let me see you, Gladys. You got the lifetime balance, $15. All right, well, and 57 for each tire. 57 all right. And uh, valve stems. One, and, two. Uh, Why didn't give you three valve stems? They got on here. Oh, a lug nut installment. Okay. So you must have had front tire or a 532nd it should be replacing your front tires. They put these here on the rear? Yes, they put these yeah, on the, the rear. The rear so. so they said the front tires are 532nd. They recommend like yeah. 2 to 332nd for you replace right. them. Okay? And they replace a lug nut. Okay? Alright. Okay. Alright? Right yeah. Okay. What did they recommend about the front tires? Well, they're not going to last forever, I guess. So. Oh, they told you to get new ones? Well, soon, pretty soon. They anyway. recommend. Okay. Thank you, Good to see you. Good to see you, Gladys. I don't know how to get to the light. There's no way I can get to the light. Yeah, All right. I cannot okay, get well, to that I guess light. Real set. Yeah, I want to get to the light here. Going. Can you come with me? All right. So but I pulled a bunch so of I gotta get, bolts in put the car. car. I gotta put this well, where the car is. Oh, you want to put that in the car? Yeah, I can't carry it to the store. Oh, okay. Too much stuff, so. All righty. Yeah, I got the keys for the car right there. You want to hold this? Yep. And I'll put this underneath, may I please? Sure, yeah. Yeah, I got the key. Thank you. All right. So. I'll wait for you right here. Okay. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. Good, thanks. Hi, Greg Washburn. I'd like to know how is your uh, cable TV show going? Your public access show. The show is uh, is moving along. I'm I'm taping material and I'm assembling the shows for the uh, the Iguosa public access show on Wappinger's Cablevision. I loved what you did with a Vanderbilt men mention. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you very much. That was in Poughkeepsie or uh, right above it, or it's in uh, Hyde Park. Yeah. I loved it. And the show, the show is on Saturday night at, at midnight on uh, Wappinger's Cablevision. And I understand you're going to go to Hartford, Connecticut, and get it on there. And I'm going to be investigating, uh, applying to put my show on in uh, Hartford, Connecticut. Ah. Well, good luck to you, Greg. Uh, thank you very much. But... Hi, Greg. How are you doing today? Hi. I'm pretty good. Uh, what do you think is the future of public access? I think the uh, public's a public access is important for the communities because it, it gives a direct link to the, uh, puts a finger on the, the button of what's happening in the local communities as far as the yeah. people and, right. and events that are going on. Right, right. And the future should have a bright future because of... Uh, because of more you know, more channels being open.
choices for people to look at on their television sets. No, I think you got a point. Good point there. Thanks, Greg. Yeah, you're welcome. Somebody calls in. And, uh, Hi, Greg Washburn. I'd like to know how is your uh, cable TV show going? Your public access show. The show is uh, is moving along. I'm I'm taping material and I'm assembling uh, shows for the uh, the Iguosa public access show on Wappinger's Cablevision. I loved what you did with the Vanderbilt men mention. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you very. That was in Poughkeepsie or right above it? Or? It's in uh, Hyde Park. Yeah. I loved it. And the show the show is on Saturday night at, at midnight on uh, Wappinger's Cablevision. And I understand you're going to go to Hartford, Connecticut and get it on there. And I'm going to be investigating, uh, applying to put my show on in uh, Hartford, Connecticut. Ah. Well, good luck to you, Greg. Uh, thank you very much, but Hi, Greg. How are you doing today? Hi. I'm pretty good. Uh, what do you think is the future of public access? I think the uh, public, public access is important for the communities because it, it gives a direct link to the... Uh, puts a finger on the, the button of what's happening in the local communities as far as the yeah. people and, right. and events that are going on. Right, right. And the future should have a bright future because of uh, because of more more channels being opened up for broadcasting and more uh, more choices for people to look at on their television sets. No, I think you got a point. Good point there. Thanks, Greg. Yeah, you're welcome. It's in mail time, folks. Again, let's see. I think ten have been done. How are you doing with your in mail and out mail? Did you like the program yesterday over at the Christian Women's? What's it called? Group. Okay. Here's four dollars to pet assistance for helping the dogs and the cats and the horses. Here's uh, four nice programs, John McClendon. For Pittsfield Public Access. Here's uh, $90 to Andrew Herzman for uh, 150 audio cassettes. I'll show you one. Those are money orders.
audio cassettes like these, 120 minutes. That's that, two hours? Yeah. No, is it? Yeah, it is. Oh, that's good. Uh, here's the museum rent. And here's the electric. It was uh, 50, I sent him 40, was that right? And here's to West Hartford Public Access TV, chat with Glendora. So, I wish you would help pet assistance. So we'll continue. What's the next one? Social Security. And uh, Ed Whitney, who lives in Westport, Connecticut, did a grand job. He stopped at Seymour, Connecticut, and he got all these tapes. He got 20 VHS, and they're all two-hour programs, uh, two hours on each each uh, VHS. Thank you, Ed. But he sent it to the post office box and uh, and Gant forwarded it and then charged uh, $11. And then I gave, and I've got to return $11 to Ed. And... Uh, then the post office lost the $20 I gave him to pay the $11 and give me the change in Purple Heart stamps. So the post office lost that. So there's 20 more dollars. And then I just gave the post office $20 yesterday again. So that's another 20 So what do we got here? $50 to return those tapes with all of the mistakes of everybody, including myself. No, I don't think we ought to do that again. What's a report card teach a parent? You don't have to lift weights to raise a dumbbell. Sometimes, Glendora, I think you are one. The Medicare thing is all, I mean the Social Security thing is all about Medicare, and it's all in Spanish, so I think there's a mistake there. And Pastor Slater said, that Mark Antony said, I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. And so Pastor Slater says, I come to uh, talk about Glendora, not to praise her. And the teacher asked the little girl, uh, who said, I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him, and the little girl said, The Undertaker. So I don't have Medicare, or Medicaid, or hospital, or doctor. I've never been sick. And I thank God practically every hour for the gift of good health. And, well, I've only been, oh, only one time when that tiny, tiny tick came into my body and cost $600 in the hospital and 19, no, 19, yeah, $1,900 in the hospital and, uh, Six hundred dollars for doctors, all a huge ripoff. So, and that was what a couple of summers ago. So I don't have Medicare or Medicaid or hospitalization or whatever, or health insurance. Insurance is such a queer thing, folks. On this damp, cloudy day. Uh, what is it? 
the insurance man is hoping that you don't die and you're hoping that you die and I don't know it's sort of a funny situation so we have to add to the long list of uh, things to do for a chat with Glendora. My goodness, chat with Glendora takes so much time. And that's to send to L.A. to their website the uh, thesis by Victoria that won her her master's degree at, at a Polytechnic Institute in Troy. Okay. And then here is the last in mail. And it's the people that I met somewhere. And I wanted to call them. Oh, yes, at, again, at the uh, exhibit of Victoria's thesis, uh, which was on a chat with Glendora. And this is some people that I wanted to call up Norman Kaiser. Oh, yeah, I should call him. Okay. Oh, and the telephone is 500 calls behind at least. Hmm. So that ends the in-mail tray empty. Who was the first woman doctor? Who was the first woman doctor? The teacher wanted to know. And the boy said, Dolly Medicine. EM, press three for advanced options. Press five to repeat the current message. Press last message received at 10, 10 AM. Good morning, Glendora. Karen Galasso, how are you? It is Thursday the 10th. I just want to let you know I did go to charter yesterday, um, so I apologize for taking so long. I hope all is well, and when you have a moment, you can call me at the office, 845-87. Have a nice day. Oh, Karen, you're Press terrific. Four for the previous Thank you message. so much. Press 3 for advanced options. Press message deleted. No more messages. Press... What does a report card teach a parent? I have no idea. You don't have to lift weights to raise a dumbbell. <laughs> okay, Ed, I'll be talking to you soon. I uh, hope that you, those things come through the mail. Andrew Herzman, tell me about that law that you looked up today about notary public. Yes, I went on the internet today and, be, and I looked up, um, there's an official website uh, that Albany puts up. Uh, you know, and it explains exactly what uh, a notary public is, how how one get obtains a license, and what the um, uh, people who have licenses what they're obligated to do. Now, um, it says here, notary must officiate on request, and then underneath it says the penal law 195.00 provides that an officer before whom an oath of affidavit may be taken is bound to administer the same when requested, and a refusal to do so is a misdemeanor. And it also uh, state, uh, states people versus Brooks as uh, an example of, uh, I guess it's a lawsuit that uh, occurred um, concerning that, that very issue. So uh, these lawyers... Um, Andrew, just a minute. And who, who, give me the list again today who refused to notarize for you. Well, I, it was a law office. It was called Gray and Gray Attorneys. What town? Uh, I went there in Farmingdale, New York, on 360 Main Street. Gotcha. Thank you. Uh, I went. 
I went right inside, and the receptionist, um, I asked the receptionist for a um, notary public. Uh, he said, wait, wait one moment. He went in the back uh, to inquire about one, and yeah. he came back and said, yes, there's one available, but since I'm not a client, uh, they refused it to do so. I guess I just committed a misdemeanor, right? Exactly. So I, I said, well, why is it called a uh, notary public? Uh, it's for the public. Uh, you know, and it's not its not a uh, notary client. <laughs> so uh, all he said was he's sorry, which didn't get me anywhere because I still didn't get my signature. Well, we got, we got him on record. We got him on record. Yes. Well, uh, I, I wrote a letter explaining the whole thing, and I sent it up to Albany, uh, to the Department of State. Um, the address was on the website. They are at 99 Washington Avenue in Albany. So if this happens to anybody else, uh, I would also complain to them. Good for you. And, uh, make sure, you know, get, 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 get all these people who are breaking the law, you know. All right. And who else broke it today? Responsible. And who else broke the law? Well, uh, I, well, I don't know if they broke the law or not, but I was at the public library in Farmingdale and, and uh, asked for a notary public, and uh, they told me to come back at 5 o'clock because there wasn't one available at that time. And... Uh, then I returned at 5 o'clock, and uh, then I was informed that there was indeed one at 3 o'clock, and uh, they gave me the wrong information. So uh, now I have to go back tomorrow at 3 o'clock, and uh, have list lied to me again, I don't know. All right. But this, I don't know what it, what's going on, incompetence or what, but that's what you pay taxes for, <laughs> for service like that. And uh, Andrew, where are you going to be in an hour? Uh, probably still here at home. Okay, I'm going to call you at half past 8. Okay, that's fine. Okay, uh, Devin and I, we've just done a wonderful thing. How many TV stations have we got served for June and July? I don't know how many we have total. Uh, down here in the floor, that are ready to post. I have no idea. What would you say, 30? Maybe more. How many TV 40? stations are there total in the whole list? Uh, 85, 75, 70. All right, I'll say 70. So we did. But Devin, let me ask you something. something. Yeah. Huh? Fifty something. We've just got fifty TV stations all ready for programs to cable cast in July, and it's only the first week of June. I came with ten of them done. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, Andrew, <laughs> I love it. Andrew, you want to ask uh, Devin something? Go ahead. Yeah. Yes, I want to know. Uh, when Dora explained to me that you have an iPad, I wanted to find out which one you had and uh, how you like it. Uh, I got the. Uh, um, the basic Wi-Fi only model, because I already have I already hold okay. an iPhone, so I don't really need to carry around another 3G device. But right, I, and it's 16 gigabytes, it's the smallest capacity too. But I really I really do like it because I've almost entirely replaced my laptop with it, except for the work I do for Glendora. Did you hear that? He's almost entirely replaced his laptop, except for the work he does for Glendora making the dubs. I mean, it's amazing. So. It is it worth uh, buying then, is it, and under your opinion, or is it uh, more of a gimmick? Yeah, I think it is. I mean, the only, I think it, this would come first, and if you need if you need features beyond that, then you would go with an actual laptop or desktop computer. I think it's something that can work for most people in place of what they would do with a laptop now. Huh? That's a great statement. Or basically, what netbooks do. What? Or basically what okay. netbook computers do. It's it's like that. Just do your browsing, your email, and all the stuff you can do with the apps. And there's also the e-reader part, which isn't usually a netbook thing, but that too. And I do actually enjoy reading books on it too. Okay, that was another question I wanted to ask because uh, I don't like reading books on a computer screen. So Yeah, I've gotten a lot of uh, similar comments on that though, so it's probably just me. Okay, well that's good to know. I appreciate your uh, insight on it because uh, I was considering getting one, and I wanted to find out uh, from someone who already had one uh, what they thought. Are you Thank going? You for that. Yep. Well, I'm glad that, yeah, he's a good opinion. Um, oh, yeah. Devin, are you going to Connecticut Hartford with us on the 21st, Monday the 21st? No, I don't think I am. Andrew, are you going on Monday the 21st? Uh, I will, uh, I, I will go unless I somehow get it have to work that day, but uh, as of now, I plan on getting there around noontime, so that way 
Uh, we can drive together, and you said you need to be there by 3 o'clock. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, I do. Andrew, would you consider coming up the night before and staying at one of my friends' house and, uh, and then uh, going with us, because I may like to go earlier in the morning? Would you consider that? Well, and coming back here, I'm, mm -hmm. you can't be away from NBC well, that long, huh? No, well, what, what time do you plan on leaving? Then I, I can adjust a little. Is it, how early do you want to go? I uh, would love to leave around uh, 9. 9? Yeah. Okay. You said it takes about three hours to get there? Yes. Um, two and a half, maybe. Uh huh. Okay. So you, you want to get there around noontime? I'd love to. Good. Okay. Um, what, what, what do you want to do between noon and 3 then? Well, I'd like to go to East Hartford and sound out the public access there. East Hartford. Ah. East Hartford is contiguous to uh, Hartford. Right, right. Well, if we can uh, do a compromise, I could probably get there maybe 10.30 or so. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I don't want to get up too early because what's going to happen then... Yeah, okay, no, uh, I don't... Actual, the no, actual I, thing is happening at 7, I think, right? No, I don't want you to stretch it in any way. Just, we're going to do it yeah, easy. Well, I don't want to ruin our trip. I want our trip to be nice. Oh, yeah, no, it'll be nice. Um, uh, do you know how long that meeting is at 7 o'clock? I, no, I do not, but I would some. I would guess at the most they'd be out at 9. Okay. So then, and you will be all signed up because they're going to give you a paper and you sign right. up there and you're all ready for July, August, and September. Isn't that wonderful? Right. So then after, oh yeah, that would be fantastic. And Hartford. You know, be, if I have to bring a, a, a show, uh, the I would. Done, uh, no, I don't think you or, have to. I don't think you have to, but I would if I were you. I would bring four of them. I would bring. Okay. I would bring one for each week for the month of July and get this thing started. Uh, bring four. Okay. All right, I just wanted to, yeah, good idea. Um, okay. That's a good idea. Okay, Andrew. So, um, if it ends at 9, then I could drive you home. You'll be home by midnight, I yeah. guess, three, three hours later. I think Greg is going with us, dear. I think, oh, really? I think okay. so, yeah. Victoria cannot, but Greg is going, and Devin's not going. Ah. So, will you be able to get a ride home uh, at 9 o'clock, or? It, uh, and it depends whose car we go in. See, ah, okay. See, because that's not going to um, work. That's not going to work. If we go in Greg's car, you've got to come back. If we go in your car, you've got to come back. Okay. Right, right. I'll call you at uh, 9 at 8.35. Okay. Uh, the teacher said, who was the first woman doctor in America? And the boy said, Dolly Medicine. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, Andrew. <laughs> that's a good one. Say, yeah. say goodbye to Devin. Hey, bye, Devin. Nice meeting you. Yep, nice meeting you, too. Bye-bye. All right, take care. Hey folks, Walmart says unbeatable prices, but St. Paul says unbeatable quotes. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. This is Philippians 4 4. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving the peace of God which surpasses all understanding 
All of these quotes you've heard over and over again. Well, they came from St. Paul. Philippians 4. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are a good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. For I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Did you ever wonder where those came from? They came from St. Paul. Philippians 4. A woodchuck was just gnawing, gnawing at the door from my back stoop to the sun to the south. Now why was he doing that? So I put out about 10 pecans for him to gnaw on. And that gnaws on the pocketbook. Six dollars a tray. And a bunch of grapes cost six dollars. Uh, I think we better start beating this inflation. We better stop cooperating. We better put aside the preferences, the desires and the predilections that are in the process of choosing, the act of choosing. Came to see your plants. Oh, oh they're beautiful. Yeah, he went right up to the ceiling, didn't he? <laughs> now what are we going? What are we going to do now? We can't put a hole in the ceiling, can we? Well, he's got about another foot to go. He's got another foot to go. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Yeah, and and his leaves did come back, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. I had a couple that turned yellow. Yeah. No, I'm going this way. Thank you. Oh, that's wonderful. Doesn't this look nice? Yeah. Oh, it really, it really adds so much to the atmosphere. Yeah, it does. It adds so much to the atmosphere. Who? Which ones are those? Alice and the. Uh, Alice and. Uh, Angela. Yeah, uh, those are Alice and Angela. Yeah. 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 Yeah, tell me about the 
tell me about this. They're doing it as well. The mother plant is out where people can see it passing by the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the uh, uh, the two avocados are out on the patio. Mm -hmm. And what did you do with the poinsettias? Right now I have them uh, just outside. There's like ar around the patio we have. Yeah, oh, that would look little nice. Grasses that are about this high. Yeah. They're just on the other side, so it, it gives them some red. Yeah. Green, you know. Isn't that yeah. that's very pretty? Yeah. yeah. You going to take pictures for me? I'm going to yeah. show them on TV. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Well, I'm very pleased with that. That makes a very pretty window. Yeah. And the gerania, they look lovely. Yeah. Well, that's all. I just dropped by to see the beauties. Yeah. Uh, the uh, programs will be, there's about 65 packages. They will, they're all ready, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. uh, they, won't, they will be posted on uh, June the 28th, which is a Monday. Okay. So what time do you want them? Um, on Monday, mm -hmm. the 28th? Yeah. I've got stamps for all of them. Oh, you do? Yeah, I bought so the stamps for all of them. All I have to do is, is cancel them and sort them to where, into their respective boxes. So, um, 3.30. Okay, I'll try to have it before there, yep. Yeah. yeah, at the latest. Okay, I'll, have, I'll try to have it before then. Plenty of time. I should yeah. start buying those dog and cat stamps. Oh. The yeah. finally got the package from Connecticut, finally got it, it was 20 VHS, and, uh, but they've, they've lost that $20 that oh, I, that I handed, uh, yeah. her name is Lisa. Her oh, yeah. Okay. That I handed, Lisa, I handed it to her personally. Yeah. It just went in through a crack somehow. You know, you know sometimes what happens to it, got mixed into her. Where she put it too. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. yeah. That was my my reading of it. Yeah. Right. So, what do you think could happen to it? Let's see. Did it have any identification on it? No. no. I think it might have said Postmaster Kinderhook, though. Oh, really? I think so. Yeah. Well, if it had it on there, I guess. It's a post. That was on it. back to him. Yeah. But okay. Well, we just keep adding up the money we lose, $120. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't want to do that too often. Mm -hmm. Fred says, I don't want to go to school today. And his mother says, well, you have to go to school today. And he says, well, the teachers don't like me, and the kids don't like me, and the custodian's got it in for me. And uh, his mother says, you have to go to school. You're not sick. Uh, you've got a lot to learn. You've got a lot to offer. Besides, you're 45 years old and the principal. <laughs> Good to see you, and thanks for the taking care of the plants. I'm glad you're pleased with them. Is your wife pleased with them, too? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. So I look forward to your pictures. All right.